Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, July 4th, 2013. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, the first of six episodes recorded in Philadelphia surrounding the National Homebrewers Conference. Members of the Barley Legal Homebrew Club share their aeration experiment. Which method is best? Stay tuned to see. If you're new to home brewing and would like to get into the hobby for the first time, check out our website, basicbrewing.com, where you can find archives of our audio and video podcasts and our DVDs to walk you through basic and more advanced brewing techniques. You can follow me on Twitter. My username is basicbrewing, all one word. Also, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash basicbrewing.james. And we have a show page on Facebook at facebook.com slash basicbrewing. We're on Google Plus, too. You can find our little community on Google Plus by searching for Basic Brewing. Thanks again to everybody clicking on the Amazon.com associate link on our BasicBrewing.com site. Whenever you think of Amazon, think of us first and click on our associate link instead of going straight to Amazon. That associate link will take you to Amazon where you can shop as normal. Uh, you won't. It won't cost you any extra, but you'll be helping to uh, support the show because we get a little commission off of that. We greatly appreciate your support. Especially after um, seeing the totaling the bills from Philadelphia, we greatly, <laughs> greatly appreciate your support. Man, it's expensive to to go to these things, but I think it's worth it. I think that uh, we get a lot of good content, and uh, I I hope that uh, you will uh, think so too. We have uh, associate links for Brew Your Own Magazine and the American Home Brewers Association on our site too. You can find our Basic Brewing iPhone app on iTunes and our Android app on Amazon.com. We're on the BlackBerry Podcast Directory, and we're on the Stitcher app, and we're on the Windows Phone Directory, too. Check out our Brewer's Logbook at brewing, uh, basicbrewingshop.com. It's been a while since I've done this. In the front of the book is a calendar that you can use to track your fermentations and plan your brews. And the good thing about the calendar is that it is blank. So you have a full year of calendar pages no matter when you start your brewing year. Here it is July, and you can get a calendar that, that has 12 months that you can use. And there's room in the back to log the details of up to 50 batches of brew. If you want to put a tip in our tip jar, some coinage in our guitar case, you can do so by going to basicbrewing.com slash support. And thanks to everybody who has done so already. Protect your precious beer with one of our growler bags. The bag is essentially a cylindrical cooler that is just the right size to accommodate a 64-ounce growler or a couple of 22-ounce bombers or three 12-ounce bottles. And it has an adjustable strap, so you can sling it over your shoulder. Check out uh, those bags at basicbrewingshop.com, and uh, we only have a limited number of those available. We had an amazing time in Philadelphia. We captured a lot of content, met a bunch of people. I mean, we could not... I mean, pro night and club night, we were just constantly talking to folks. It was awesome. Um, you can you can see a couple of articles that I wrote about our touring around uh, the Philadelphia area on beerandwinejournal.com. And many thanks to Brian Colasar of thebrewlounge.com for being our tour guide during that day. It's a full day, 12 hours. And I think Brian said he put 130 miles on his car. <laughs> taken us around. So we captured a lot of great stuff there as well. Uh, we heard from several of you worried that our involvement with the new online publication, Beer and Wine Journal, uh, would somehow spell the end of basic brewing. Well, that that's not true. That couldn't be further from the truth, and I should have made that clearer in the uh, announcement that uh, appeared on this feed. Uh, I believe that uh, beerandwinejournal.com is an extension of of our efforts here, and I'm looking forward to continuing the collaboration with Chris Colby there. And uh, it, to prove that it's complimentary, uh, I'm planning to write up a summary of today's experiment to post uh, on the site. So visit beerandwinejournal.com later this week. Um, please like the Beer and Wine Journal page on Facebook to help people find us, and follow uh, Beer Wine Journal, that's at Beer Wine Journal on Twitter to see when new articles are posted. And please help us get the word out about this new publication. We're already getting a lot of traffic and some good comments and um, good things in store. This is the start of something great. Chris has already posted a ton of uh, awesome content, and it's only been a week and a half since the official launch. 
I hope you enjoy the uh, Independence Day festivities this week safely. It's uh, also Independence Day for homebrewers because as of July 1st, homebrewing is legal in all 50 states. The Mississippi homebrew law officially went into effect on July 1st, so uh, even more reason to celebrate this week. Let's get into today's uh, experiment. It's one of the one of one of three experiments that we recorded while we were in the Philly area. Uh, Bob Stemsky did an experiment on aging no-chill wort before fermentation, and uh, Jameson Parker did an experiment comparing different ways to prepare fruit for fruit beers. You'll be hearing those in the weeks to come, as well as uh, three interviews with innovative commercial brewers in the Philadelphia area. And uh, we've got also got at least two video video podcasts as well. So now uh, I have to give Evan Fritz uh, a lot of credit for helping coordinate this experiment. Evan and I have been corresponding via email for a long time, and he expressed interest in getting his homebrew club, Barley Legal, to do something with us while we were out there. And I think that they came up with a winner, uh, an experiment comparing the effect of different aeration techniques on a single wort. Well, here we are. Uh, we're exceeding the capacity of the room. Uh, <laughs> even though we are in the uh, basic brewing presidential suite here, <laughs> here in the Marriott. <laughs> shh, Peter, shh. <laughs> here we have uh, representatives of the Barley Legal Homebrew Club. Out of uh, Maple Shade, New Jersey. Maple Shade, New Jersey. We were just uh, we started our big old tour day yesterday at the uh, Iron Hill, there in Maple Shade, and and tasted it. Uh, yes, we did, and we uh, we tasted a very delicious beer, the Buccaneers Bounty. 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 Is by chance is by chance the brewer here today? He is, but he didn't he's not in the room. Oh darn it! It's a delicious beer. Anyway, uh, so welcome you guys. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to talk to you, Evan, because you're the one who uh, has been uh, contacting me and, you, and you've been coordinating all this. Evan Fritz, uh, tell us what we've got going on here. We've got a, a pretty ambitious experiment. Okay, yeah. So we have um, eight different beers, all from the same batch of wort, um, all that underwent different aeration techniques, starting with no aeration, um, the second one was using a wine degasser. The third one was using the shake the carboy method. Fourth was dumping from one carboy to another, shaking it back and forth. Uh, the fifth method was an aquarium pump. Sixth was pure oxygen from a medical oxygen container. Seven was the pure oxygen, but we went overboard with the oxygen. So what would be normal for a pure, pure oxygen, we did a lot more. And then the last one, number eight, was... Uh, we used a dry yeast as opposed to all the other seven had a liquid yeast, the same strain of uh, American ale, and there was no aeration whatsoever on that one either. So what, talk about the recipe. So, uh, Jim, want to talk about the recipe? Where's Jim? Introduce yourself, Jim. Hi, I'm Jim Fish. I'm uh, one of the officers of Bar Eagle. Where is the recipe? Is Didn't it the, you brew it? You're the, <laughs> I he's, don't remember he's my brewed recipes since then. from freaking six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about a pale ale? We're talking about I what are we brown doing? Ale. I think well, yeah, it was a it was a light American brown ale, lightly hopped or moderately hopped, mm. and um, you know I don't know the actual recipe, but it was pretty basic beer, nothing over the top, probably about five percent alcohol. So something that that we hope would not be masked by. Overly hopping or, or something like that. Correct. Well, very good. I mean, is, which, Jim, do you want to talk about which one you did, or how did you, how did you actually brew it in the experiment? We actually brewed a five-gallon batch or a six-gallon batch, and uh, once we got done the chilling, then we put it each in eight different gallon jugs. So it might have been an eight-gallon batch. Okay. And then we uh, pitched a uh, did all the different aeration techniques that Evan already explained, and then we pitched a different yeast except for the dry yeast. And airlocks, well, I told him to put on blow-off tubes. He put airlocks on, and he had a mess the next day because <laughs> everything exploded. <laughs> now, what kind of pitching rate did you guys uh, do? Uh, we basically measured that out. Uh, it's, uh, 32 grams each for the 1056. 
Yes. And then so he made he made a large starter with the American Ale yeast, weighed out each individual portion for each pitch. Thirty two grams each went into a one gallon container. And then the dry yeast was 2.35 grams, which was about the equivalent to the liquid pitch. Okay, and I'm assuming that that's according to a yeast pitching calculator. That Correct. Correct. You. Okay. And we keep saying he. Uh, the gentleman who brewed this, his name is Brett. He's the owner of Brew Your Own Bottle Homebrew Supply. It's in um, Westmont, New Jersey. And he's kind of our, our home base for a lot of the club members in Bar the Legal. So, shameless plug time, but, uh, <laughs> That's all right. you know, he's the one that did all the brewing and made the beer. You know, he's where all of us get all of our equipment and our ingredients from, so we figured who would, who would be better to brew it, since we live so far from Andy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Andy is here, hey. uh, and Steve hey. is here, too. Uh, now, we've, you know, first of all, what we did is we, we, we made our own, we were pretty ingenious, I think, <laughs> on the, uh, on, we made our own cooler. You guys brought the beers. You brought two examples of each in a in a cardboard box, and we said, "How are we going to cool these down?" And when you texted, "Can we use your bathtub?" I was like, uh, <laughs> "Okay, uh, this one tastes like a foot." Now, uh, so what we did was we uh, we uh, we put the we took the beers out of the cardboard box. We we borrowed a gigantic trash can trash bag. From the 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 the, uh, the ma- what are they? They're, are they housekeeper. maids? The housekeeper. Thank you. I'm sorry. I want to be politically correct. But the housekeeper was very nice. Gave us this giant uh, trash bag, which I took down to the uh, the ice machine. And I hope nobody was sleeping by the uh, ice machine because it ran for a very long time. Is that what is that? Thirty pounds of ice I brought back. Anyway, you so you put the ice bag in the box, and then we put the uh, uh, the beers into the ice. So that's. That's an excellent. If you're stuck in a hotel room somewhere and you need a cooler, there's an idea. Or prison. Or pr- prison. <laughs> the ice <laughs> machines in prison don't hold that much. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do is, uh, since we don't, uh, it would take an enormous amount of cups to do side by side by side by side by side with eight samples. What we're going to do is we're going to do a blind tasting, one at a time, with selected. We hope we have the most qualified uh, people in the room, uh, and then us uh, <laughs> selected, uh, and then we will uh, uh, taste these one by one, make notes, and then we'll we'll get back together afterwards. Uh, now we won't record all that. We'll just uh, we'll just do it, and we'll come back. Any anything you want need to add? So I have some notes here from the actual fermentation. Period. Oh, okay. Do we want to talk about that now, or do we want to talk about that after we've tasted? Do we want to do the? Do we want to talk? Well, yeah. Let's yeah, talk let's about that it. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, day one fermentation. Uh, most of them began within 1.5 hours after pitching the yeast. Um, the very first to start showing signs uh, was the no aeration, and then the degasser, the shake, container to container, then the aquarium pump, puro to the over-oxygenated Puro 2, and then the dry yeast. Um, day two, uh, even though FirmCap went into all of the containers, each one blew off, <laughs> blew off the airlock. Um, however, there was no noticeable flocculation. Uh, the tube was suspended halfway up the fermenter on the Puro 2, and the over-oxygenation um, as well. And the, the fermentation temperature for all of them were 70 degrees across the board. I forgot to say that. Um, so the vigorous fermentation um, going from most to least was the pure O2, over-oxygenated version, and then it was the no aeration, then the regular pure oxygen, the shake, then the container to container, aquarium pump, then the degasser, and then the dry yeast was last again. Day three in the morning, Croizen was starting to show... Um, and it actually started to drop already on the pure oxygen. Um, the only one showing flocculation was the aquarium pump and the shake. All the others looked exactly the same as they did in day two. Uh, later part of day three at the end of the night, um, the aquarium pump was finished fermenting. Um, then the uh, shake method was finished. And finally, the pure oxygen and the over oxygen finished all later in day three. Day four, the first to finish was the pure oxygen. Um, second was the container to container. And then day five, all of the remaining three finished, which was the no aeration, the wine degasser, and the dry yeast with no aeration. So 
you know, some of the conclusions or, or I guess a hypothesis would be, you know, the one that was started with no aeration, the skip the aerobic fermentation, um, we figured that would probably be the reason there. We don't know. We'll, we'll see what it tastes and, and make some judgments later. But, um, you know, proven by the amount of the sediment in there, uh, it had the least, the least sediment, so probably the least amount of growth. Mm. <clears throat> the uh, pure oxygen was the strongest all around. Um, it was the most vigorous, had the most flocculation and the most sediment when it was all done. Uh, the aquarium pump and the degasser were very similar in all those qualities. The over-oxygenation really hurt the, uh, the fermentation, took longer to get going, and it was one of the last to finish. And the container-to-container -container fermented okay. Um, <laughs> it was uh, actually double-pitched by accident, so <laughs> that one might be thrown out later. Um, but the two pure oxygens both had a croisin um, strong enough to blow off um, the, the airlocks. And, uh, you know, we think aerating with dry yeast, you should still oxygenate, even though it says just to sprinkle it in there, which I know some people around here do. Now, did, do you uh, – Peter has a question, but I want to – did you uh, see any difference in the, uh, the attenuation and the difference between the, the final gravity numbers? That's a good question. My, my uh, cheat sheet here doesn't say that. We'll have to post that in the show notes. Yeah, we'll, we'll do an after, uh, afterwards. And Peter, Peter Simons. Yeah, I'm just curious about how you determined that the fermentation was finished. Did you actually take a gravity reading for that? Well, I believe it was just visually. We were just doing everything visually. We don't think we took any, any gravity readings over the, over the course. Okay, so it was airlock activity, basically. Right. Airlock, and it was a clear, clear glass container, so you could actually see what was going on in there. Okay. Good question. Any other questions or comments on the, on the process? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's get tasting. Okay. We've changed plans. We were going to, like, taste all the beers and then come back and discuss afterwards. But we're kind of, this is more of a, more of a lively presentation than I thought. The, who wants to talk about the thoughts? Uh, we've tasted two, so let's, let's compare and contrast the first two. Okay. And, and, and introduce yourself the first time you talk. I'm Bob Grossman from Haddonfield, New Jersey, uh, a uh, certified judge. And the first beer was very clean and well attenuated. It had a dry bitterness. The roasted grains uh, jumped out into my taste perception, uh, and it was very delineated, uh, almost all of the ingredients. And uh, it, it was okay, but then when we got to the second beer, all of a sudden everything seemed to blend, and uh, the, the malts were, were quite uh, in balance. Anybody else? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, beer number two definitely was a lot brighter. Um, literally, the malt really did pop. Um, you got that right away. It actually finished a little bit more bitter than the first one. Uh, the first one was definitely more tannic up front and then had a malt finish to it. But this one, it just bright, balanced all around. And like I said, it was like, first one was like two-dimensional. This one is like in 3D. Introduce yourself. Oh, I'm John Kampanik. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm from Mount Holly, New Jersey. Okay. Who else? Who wants wants to talk? Andy. Yeah, I mean, I find the the second one to be, and I heard people mention this sweeter. The first one was very dry and crisp, and this one uh, seems a little sweeter on the finish. So it probably has to do with the way the yeast worked through the beer. Would we characterize? So I guess we would characterize the differences as being dramatic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Dramatically yeah. more positive. Uh. Peter Simons from Oatley in Australia, <laughs> we, with my really good buddies that I've come to know and love in the last couple of days. <laughs> from Barley Homebrew. From Barley Homebrew, yes. Um, yeah, the, just comparing number one with number two. Number one, quite uh, distinct. Uh, a lot of um, uh, roast barley in the finish. The second one, lot smoother it'll be really interesting to see how we go through the other ones but at the moment number two looking good okay we've got more work to do stewards our stewards are working hard i've got a little bit more beer uh steve you've are you, you you're you're, not, the beer? you're just you're just the are, you're just going to opt out sort of, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's tweeting okay, okay wait let me he's, he's giving instructions over there but you know mm. and this is the third beer third beer Okay, yeah. thank but you. A lot of times, 
And, and so far we haven't de detected any uh, stressed yeast character yet. No, 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 they've been clean beers. Clean beers. Clean beers. Yeah, they were bottle conditioned as pretty much as they were finished up. There's not, so they, were they bottled, bottled at the same time? No, different times, depending on, as each batch finished up, then he would decide to bottle them each batch it separately. Like this one Interesting. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Ryan Cochran from Collingswood, New Jersey. I, I think in this, you know, the last one we said was really bright. I think this one is just flat. There's almost nothing that jumps out at you. It's, it's a little bit warmer, but I don't think, you know, I don't really think that has anything to do with it. Oh, I'd, I'd like, I'd like to be a little bit contrary. I, I think this one is, um, has got a nice counterpoint compared to, not against number one. But between number two and this one, number three, this one again is nice and rounded. It's a, it's well balanced. It, there's no off flavors as such. I I, anybody get any off flavors? No. Not off flavors, but the finish is almost a little tart or, or, or sour. I mean, oh. not in an affected way, but just not, not in a pleasant, complex aftertaste. It just dr finishes very quickly and just drops off. I'm actually picking. I'm picking up a, a a little bit more alcohol taste in this. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, it it tastes yeah. like it's a little bit thinner, and yeah. I, I don't know. I can't quite identify, but I definitely get. I know they're the same, almost the same alcohol. I, I but think that's the dryness. Yeah, I, I think that's a perceived dryness from that. But mm -hmm. okay, Steve, can you take notes? <laughs> so, right. so. Uh, uh, there, this is number three. No. Yeah, yeah, number yeah. Number three is uh, there's a difference of opinion where uh, some some picking up more of an alcohol taste. Uh, there, uh, Peter the contrarian says it's it's round, but uh, no, I, I, but I would I would agree that the that, that the finish is more it's vertical. It, it it's abrupt. Yeah, abrupt. Good word. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Still the most. Yeah, I think this one's missing the subtle sweetness that the last one finished with that gave you that perception of a more full feel. Mm -hmm. This one feels a little drier at the finish, yeah. which leaves it a little flat. Yeah. Almost so. a little stringent. Mm -hmm. So is this better or worse than number one? Better. Better than one, worse than two. Yeah. Right. So this is, number three was better than one, worse than two. So I think, are we ready for round four? Four? Four. Second time. Round four. <laughs> 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 okay, now I'm ready. Hmm. No, not at But but this is yeah, this no, is no, the no, 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 this is the classic moderation discussion that you have when you're judging beers. You have an opinion. Somebody else has an opinion. You discuss it. Then you wrestle. And and then you the rationalize it. And then you arm wrestle. Fight to the death. <laughs> yeah, fight to the death. And then you come to a decision. <laughs> Those, whoever has a stronger personality wins. No, no, no. It shouldn't, it, it shouldn't work that way. <laughs> but does it often? Yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes it does. Yeah, I've seen uh, focus groups uh, done before, and they, they are very, uh, a lot of times the person who's the, with the strongest personality at the table leads the discussion. Yeah. I think that's natural. Okay, here we go with number four. Wow. This one's different. Caramel Bali. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't prejudge. I haven't touched <laughs> oh, it yet. Sorry. Wait. Oh. See, that, that's got carbonation. This does not. So maybe that bottle did come out as well. Very sweet. It misses the carbonic flavor. Wow. Yeah, I, can't I, would, I would agree this, uh, with you. It's um, sweet. Yeah, at this first. I, I don't even want to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Bill Posniak uh, at a Barley Legal Home Brewers in Maple Shade, New Jersey. Um, yeah, it tastes a little bit under attenuated. I, uh, a lot of sweetness, and uh, I guess this is. Uh, it's, 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 it's it's worthy. Yeah. 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 Very worthy. Yeah, worthy. It is sweet. Very sweet. Straight wort. I can't. I can't. It's the same. It's just straight wort. So a little cheap, a little cheap scotch in that, and we'd be good to go. We'd be good to go. There's no wort. There's no not. It's just straight wort. I don't think it's attenuated at all. Grainy. It's it's grainy, but it doesn't even have that rote. Like it's, it seems like it was a completely different wort than the other beers. It feels like it didn't finish working. Didn't, didn't, uh, didn't attenuate at all. Yeah, we got our first dumper. People are actually pouring out beer. Thank you.
Uh, so yeah, number four was. Uh, I called it a WTF beer. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to send it to what. Uh, what the, the flock? <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so the very sweet, thank you, sir. Ooh, we need another one quickly. Number uh, five is up next. It's, it's good to have a, a bad beer because it gives you a little bit more perspective on the other beers. Right. The next beer we drink will be so much better just because of this. It was straight wort. <laughs> there was no attenuation at all. I mean, no aroma, no bitterness. It was straight wort. Right, but the, the other thing to consider is as the comparisons of, of your taste buds are skewed from beer to beer, you have to be aware to sort of recalibrate yourself after you've had something that's a little off. Which one is it? Which number is this? number five. So number five is also uh, not carbonated. Um, to me, it tastes a little better than the last uncarbonated one, but um, both still uncarbonated. Could use that uh, carbonation. It's caramely. Mm -hmm. yeah. This uh, one at least has so some hops to balance the uh, the malt, mm -hmm. but again, without any carbonation in it, it's hard to really appreciate it. It's a little brighter than the number two and three. Um, possibly a little better balanced. I still think number two on balance is probably ahead at the moment. This is this is pretty sweet though in my, on my palate, uh, even even after the last one, which was even more sweet. Uh, but this still is is sweet sweet to me. But you think you think it's tastes fermented? <laughs> Definitely fermented. <laughs> we we've done better than the last one. No, this is a lot better than the last one at least. The carbonation is not uh, overwhelming. Well, I guess you're right. There's, there's, there's there's probably more dextrin in this one than the previous ones. You know, they, they, there's more residual, so it probably hasn't fermented as much. It's going to be really interesting to find out what. No, 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 no nobody writes about which number goes with which fermentation profile. Ah, that's going to be the. And these these haven't been tested before. They have not. But <clears throat> one thing I think is interesting is they were all carbonated as they finished fermenting. So. All of these beers finished at about 1.012 um, across the board, all of them. So that's, that's interesting, too, that some of them carbonated better than others. So, so we do have a final gravity we number? So but what were the final gravity? So that they all finished at about the all, same level? Every, every one of them finished at that, 10, 12. There you go. Wow, that's interesting. Ooh, even, even the one we didn't like, the wordy one, was still 10, 12. All of them. Mm. That say a lot That's suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Is number two still the? I'm picking up some flaws in this one too. I don't know if it's something to do with the fermentation or the bottling, but you definitely get this twinge of not tart, but it definitely is a little bit off. Um, but it tastes completely different than the other ones. I think um, I expected with the last one that we had, even with the carbonation, this one being low. It still doesn't taste quite right, so it, there's just a, a twinge of something. So. Anybody else get a get a fermentation flaw or, or some sort of yeast, bad yeast character from this one? I'm the only one that, I, I just We're a trying. Little, little tartness or something, but number six. This one's got some carbonation. Number six has some carbonation to it. Definitely. Well, I wonder next time if it would be something where you wait a certain amount of time to carbonate all of them. Because like you said, we carbonated the ones as they finished. Yeah. Started bottle conditioning them then. So some may have more carbonation than others just as a result. But how long ago were they bottled? Uh, what, what time is it? <laughs> Earlier today. <laughs> no, they've had a little time in the bottle. Yeah, yeah they've been in the bottle a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, th I think really the difference in carbonation is honestly from the ye the yeast. I mean, and the and the aeration techniques that we've used. I, th I think that has a lot to do with it. Woo! Uh, really? What makes you say that? I think if the if the yeast aren't replicating and they're you know flocculating out, if, if they're not in there to carbonate, you need hardly any yeast to carbonate, really. 
So I'm I'm uncertain about that. This one is quite a bit more carbonated. I think this is is this the most carbonated one of the of the yeah. bunch so far? Yeah, you, you definitely get a lot of sharp, more carbonated. Um, this is more aroma. I think it has more malt, more bitterness. It's 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 close to number one as far as the first one. Yeah. It needs to be dry hopped and make a black IPA out of it. So, absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing how little perception of malt there is in this. It's just really tart. Yeah, I find it super dry, super effervescent on my tongue. I'm not picking up any of the sweetness we picked up from the last three, I think. Um, yeah. So do we do we like it? Yeah, it's highly attenuated, though. If, if Sucked you're to dry. Looking, if you're looking for a dry... If you're looking for a brown ale, I would not recommend it. But as something different, it's it does not taste bad. I mean, it's just very dry. I'm just rating on what it is. It's it's, it's highly attenuated. Attenuated. I, I have a hard talk. I have a hard time identifying what it's supposed to be. Uh, it I doesn't agree. it doesn't fit any particular uh, style profile. So I don't know what to make out of it. I'd probably I'd probably go if I was forced to pick one at this point. I'd probably go with two still. I'm wondering whether this one, given its profile, is the one that was double pitched. We'll just have a lottery ticket on that. Yeah. <laughs> because that, that. that's really, it's like an elevator, it's just gone vump. <laughs> so I'd, I'd, I'm wondering whether that might have been the double pitch one. Yeah. Yeah. J- just a punt. That's okay. So that was number six. Yeah, sucked it dry. Yeah, yeah. All, just all the flavors sucked right out of it. Hmm. Well, it's, it's interesting how this one's really highly carbonated again. And some some of them carbonated and some of them didn't. But this is a lot sweeter. Mm-hmm. A, a lot feel. sweeter, bigger mm-hmm. mouth feel, bigger malt feel, a lot oh, wow. sweeter. Oh wow. Less attenuated than the last one. Mm-hmm. Still no aroma compared to the first one. I got a little bit of a roasty caramel yeah. aroma yeah. on that, but not hop aroma. Oh, no. Not hop aroma. Roast aroma. No, so far, none of these beers have been about the hops. None of them about the hops. The first no. one had more hops than any of them. And that was by recipe design. Right. To, exactly. We wanted to keep the hops as low-key as we could. Right. Not, yeah, I'm not, that's not a criticism of the recipe. That's just an observation. Now, this is the first one I finished, so this, that may mean something that, you know, I like this one. Um, I think it does have a very well-rounded uh, flavor. Um, I don't think there's no flaws. Like I don't think any of them have any flaws, but this one was drinkable. Yeah, I agree. I concur with Evan. This is one that you can actually drink the whole glass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in terms of balance, this is by far the most balanced, I think. Um, I think it's more akin to the second one. I think the second one actually had a little bit more malt flavor, especially in the finish. But this one, very rounded. This is definitely the most drinkable so far. Yeah, yeah I reckon this, this one between... What are we up to? Number six, number seven? Seven. seven. Number seven. 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 Calling the adjudicator. Uh, yeah, between two and seven. They, yeah. they, they're quite close, two and seven. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is tasty. Yeah, at this point, I'd probably have to taste them side by side, you know, to pick which one I like better. They're similar. Two and seven. Two and seven. Yeah, this, this is tasty. This one would go past the first round. Number eight. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, that's off, right? <laughs> you you got to get an animal control. Uh, the, uh, tasting the beers uh, as well? I need something here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Some Absolutely. Kind of you have to make sure it's right. Oh, wait, it's not happening. Is, are these the <laughs> bottles that you kept in the toilet? Just finish number eight. Oh, we found the toilet. Wait, um, we found the ones that were in the toilet. We found the toilet here. Where's the handle number eight? They didn't save the best for last. Nope. I would like to go with the sure bet and say this might be the no aeration. No aeration. And no fermentation. <laughs> no fermentation. <laughs> oh, Sweet and yeah, carbonated. Like and I don't even want oh. to drink it. Oh, this one's worse. It's a dumper. It's offensive. Yeah. Right. This is dumper number one. The other one was dumper number two. <laughs> <laughs> Who actually chose the numbering? We could have used this one as, like, the first one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this is... Uh, yeah. So this is... It just smells off. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't smell good. It's, it's a problem said, beer. It's well, a problem beer. The Where, fact that it has zero carbonation, has no, no carbonation at all, is going to, you know, the perceived taste is going to be off. There's no way to, uh, it 
It's going to taste sweet. No, it's not bad. It just smells like it hasn't fermented. It's not an off flavor. It's just, yeah, surprisingly, not nothing good. went off. Yeah. That rumored homebrew twang. <laughs> Straight <laughs> malt and water. It's more than number seven. Tastes like bad malt. Yeah, malt water. Yeah, this is uh, malt. Mexican malt Goya. We don't need number two left. Number two and number seven left. Yeah, two and seven would be a nice side by side. Side by side would be good. Hang on, I start it all. Can we go back? Can we go back and do a two by seven? I have to drink. Anybody want to try the show? Yeah. Can we do a two by seven? Do you guys remember what you're doing? I thought seven was a little over par. I think we have some number six left. Can we do a two by seven? Is there a, there's not much to look at, I don't think. All right. Okay, so, so, so we the have a whole case of number eight in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and you will again, <laughs> or still. All right, so so number eight was the biggest uh, dumper of all of them. How can we do this? We can we can what we'll do is do we know what the do we know what the yeah who want oh yeah come come and uh, come and introduce yourself. Are you the master steward? I'm the master steward. AC <laughs> Rob. <laughs> master of many things. Master of many things. Animal control Rob. Um, and then what do we want to do? Do we just want to go right down so, the list? So, okay, you, you go and you, you say what what the numbers were. When I say number one, you'll right. say which one it was, and then I'll read uh, the descriptions the that we have here. All right. So number one is uh, container to, to container. So that was the double-pitched beer. And that was thin, roasty but no major defects. And that was the one that uh, I believe you said that had the, uh, the kind of the flavors were delineated. And yeah. Very linear. Each, each, each component of the beer was, was distinctive. The malt, the grain roastiness, the hops, everything was just very chiseled and not blended or, or mellow. So that was the, the, the accidentally double-pitched one. Yes. So we can... Oh, well, you're wrong. That's that stuff's my argument then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number two. Number two was uh, pure O2 over oxygenated. Over oxygenated. Oh, really? That was that was one of our that was our second favorite, I believe. Yeah, right. Interesting. Uh, sweeter than number one, less dry but more blended and overall better beer. So the over oxygenated so far is is the number two. Uh, it's number two, and it's also the second favorite beer. Right number there. three. Uh, number three is the aquarium pump. So air, Just straight air. So air. this was this was the one that uh, uh, you guys said was kind of abrupt in Very the flavors. Sharp and Very alcoholic and. But not alcoholic, just a tinge of alcohol, but yeah, definitely sharper than the other ones. Dry. All of the components were separate, they didn't blend together well. Right. Had a tartness to it. So that was just air with the aquarium pump. Which would lead me to believe that the air helped it to uh, ferment quite well and attenuate, but not in a balanced way. Interesting. Number four? Number four was uh, degasser. So the degasser, that's... It's like a wine degasser. Like so you stick just it in your drill, and you put it in the carboy, and just, you know, buzz it around. Okay. And oh, the, like a pint stirrer. Basically. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was the, Is that what they do in Australia? That was, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> that was the one that we or said was a very sweet, under-attenuated, yeah. uh, warty, I think. Yeah. That was the first not good beer. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Number five was the dry yeast um, with no aeration. Okay. Dry yeast with no aeration. So, so that, that was the one that uh, was, was less sweet uh, than number four, but still fairly sweet, but less objectionable than the, than the previous one, but still not not one of our favorites. Not no. Number, what was this, six? Yeah, number six is just the pure O2. Hmm. Mm. That was one that we said was very carbonated, very dry. Uh, that's the one that Peter thought was double-pitched. Ah, well, so... That would be analogous to having more oxygen, and it's fermented more strongly, perhaps. Like like a double pitch would you, you would think would be more vigorous. But this isn't the double. Uh, no, this isn't the over oxygenated. Uh, this is the this prescribed is, amount of yeah. oxygen. And we had the yeah the number uh, over oxygenated was number two. Was number two. Was number two. Was number two. Yeah. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Well, that really throws off any kind of <laughs> logic. <laughs> <laughs> Show's over. Let's go. Yeah, yeah well, 
And what are we up to, number seven? Number seven is uh, the shaking method. Wow. Which we've all done. Which, yeah, which yeah. Is, was our well, second was favorite, shaking. right? Wow. Well, that's um, shaking. I mean, you guys probably already know this, but, but I, I went to the, um, uh, the art gallery, and there's a whole section there about the shakers. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is it in joke? Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was the that was our second favorite, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, good. Uh, Actually, I did have a question. How long was that shaking for? I mean, is it, do we Specified. know? A minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. So I know. I know. I've seen people that say, "Yeah, ten minutes, five minutes, fifteen minutes." So really, a minute actually made that much of a difference. Well, who can, who, can sh- jug, though, right? who can shake for ten minutes? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done at like two. Well, don't forget <laughs> this is a this is a one gallon jug. Right. Yeah, it makes a little different trying to shake a five gallon. Yeah, right. shaking a one gallon jug is a lot easier than a five gallon carboy. Yeah, it, it, <coughs> and the effect of the effect of this is shaking a beer uh, is relative to the gravity, and this one starting at fifty two uh, was able to uh, absorb some of the ambient air. That was in the in the glass jar, much better than if you were making a stronger beer, which has a harder time dissolving oxygen. And then, and if I may mention, yep. uh, I imagine the, uh, the the surface area involved in the uh, in the glass jar would be significantly higher than what would be on top of a, a carboy, or on top of a uh, a bucket. So there's more available oxygen to mix with, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Surface and, area and volume. And, and you can. You can probably shake the one-gallon jug a lot more vigorously than you yep. can the five. Yeah. I mean, when you shake a one-gallon jug after a minute, I mean, it just it's just all air. I mean, or all fizzy stuff. So, uh, and then number eight. Number eight, no surprise, is the no aeration. So no aeration at all. So there you go. So according to the, I mean, you know, the the of course the key to any experiment is repeatability. Uh, so maybe. I mean, maybe we don't be, we're not aggressive with all of these on a, on a repeat, but uh, maybe we pick out the, the, the favorites again or the, the favorites against the least favorite or something to, to trim it down a little bit. But uh, kind of surprised, I mean, the double, the double aeration, the over uh, aerating or the double oxygenating uh, was the favorite. And then the, sh- and then the shaking... Is that number seven or number two? Number two, number two was number the two. Double. Double, was the double. double oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the consensus that number two was? Well, my favorite was number seven. Oh, okay. Well, let's vote. Who, who like who like number two? Two or number seven? Two. Oh well, well. Okay, who like number seven? Okay. Well, you. You, know, like you guys, so so twice. number twos are out. Are, are by 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 vote number two was was preferred more than number seven, but both were pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, the one conclusion, one conclusion is you need to do some form of oxygenation, whether it's shaking it vigorously or using CO, uh, uh, oxygen from a tank. I, I would agree. I actually do think uh, doing another experiment, maybe using less uh, specialty malts and just doing something more simplified would actually be a good way to go next time. And as you had mentioned, um, that maybe we just do like the top two and the bottom two and compare those. Um, I would suggest skipping the bottom one. Anyway. <laughs> 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 we know that didn't work very well. <laughs> Conclusions. Um, well, I'm just I'm a little surprised that the wine degasser wand uh you know didn't perform as well as i thought it would because especially compared you know, to uh, since the shake method was one of our favorites right you think the degasser would do it i mean little i've seen those that. degasser in a decent you know cordless drill just whip it like crazy and you go up and down get some oxygen in there and i always thought that must be one of the best ways if you don't have you know access to pure oxygen and i'm surprised that it's one of the worst ways from this experiment well, I mean, they do call it a degasser, right? So, I mean, part of its purpose is to stir out anything that's in there. So, I mean, I do see that it creates kind of a cone and tends to suck air down. But maybe you're actually driving away the last bit of 
some of the oxygen in there and it's yeah. closer to the non-oxygen one. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, the RPMs are too high or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're stirring it rather right. than shaking it. So, the, so the, it's a surface uh, effect of forming bubbles that bubble up and come up, but uh, it, it's not really dissolving the oxygen into it. Right. If you says it's bringing the oxygen down into it, you're stirring it into the bottom, and you're yeah. not actually sucking the oxygen down into it. Yeah, because when, when I shake my carboys, I mean, I can see that air, those bubbles everywhere. And what the way I do when I shake is, is I shake it for 30 seconds or a minute, and I let, I let that foam come down, and then, I, and then a few minutes later, I, I, I grab that bottleneck and I shake it again. And if I'm doing a closed fermentation in a carboy, I normally use a six and a half gallon carboy that's got a good gallon right. of air space above it, so I'm really shaking a lot of air into it. Which one was the air stone one? Did you use an air stone? With, yeah, with, the with the with pure oxygen. Two of them, number two, and but, the but, you, oxygenation. but you did. Did two air six. with that or oxygen? Oxygen. oxygen. Yeah, so the, one, oxygen. so the one, I'm, I mean, the way I do mine, I go uh, uh, pond pump half an hour of air. That was a number six. So did, did, the, did, did that go through an air stone? Yeah, did the, yeah. Aquari yeah. the aquarium yeah. pump yeah. went through an air that, stone as well. Was that air? Yeah. 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 Air. That was number six, was it? Yeah. 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 And then we did two with pure O2 from the tank. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the one with uh, it was about one minute with pure O2, and then we did two minutes with pure O2, and then we did one with the aquarium stone pumping in it for 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that was number three, the aquarium pump. Yeah. So is this good? Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> but but maybe but it'll we're work. We're the other way up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. We're the, pumping up. Yeah. There. Bubbles go down where you are, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and backwards. Not <laughs> So is this going to change? Is anybody going to going to do some experimenting on their own beers? Is this going to change the way you do the next beer to see if it makes a difference in your? Oh, abs I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I think from that perspective, I normally just do nothing at all, but I actually do have uh, oxygenating stone, and I never used it, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, based on what I've tasted today, yeah, I would absolutely change of uh, what I've done in the past, but I do think that it warrants a second experiment just to see the other methods, because not everybody's going to have access to oxygen, et cetera, so shaking might be the way to go for most people. Yeah. I, I used to shake, and I've, I've lately gone to just letting it pour into the fermenter, you know, from up high, and 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 do it that way. But I would I would say since I've switched that way, I would say my beers aren't as good as uh -huh. they were before when they were shaking. So go back to shaking. James, but you, you, with basic brewing, you've done other experiments in the past about oxygenation. This isn't the first one. We, what, were there other results from the past that are lessons for that? We did, I'm trying to think back, it's been years, but we did an experiment where uh, the, the level of oxygen was measured with uh, an aquarium pump and with shaking. And shaking, uh, we didn't do an o pure oxygen in that one, uh, but, but shaking was the most effective way to get oxygen into the beer with that experiment but again we didn't we didn't go against pure oxygen with the ah, with the stone yeah. so you know after that I, I I had a an O2 stone setup and after that I just went back to shaking so <laughs> and my beers you know I didn't notice my beers uh, you know suffering from that so uh, for me this kind of uh, enforces my uh, leaning towards shaking. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I agree. I, I uh, I've been shaking and splashing and pouring for my beers up to around sixty to eighty, and then if I start to make old ales and barley wines and meads that are ninety to one hundred and forty, then I I break out my oxygen tank and and infuse it with a stainless steel stone with pure oxygen. So this that seems to be effective for me. So. Are you going to think about putting more oxygen in at this point? No, I, I, I think the shaking and splashing works just fine for your average uh, everyday beer up to 60 to 70, say. And then if they get stronger, then, I, then I'll continue with my 
pure oxygen just for their stronger gravities. Well, this has been fun and very enlightening. And uh, I appreciate everybody who uh, participated in brewing the experiment. I appreciate you guys uh, dedicating your taste buds for the, for the good and the bad. And uh, uh, do you have some sort of a cheer or a club <laughs> song or something? Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah, why don't we get fish to lead that? Barley <laughs> <laughs> home brewers. Yeah. Well, thanks, Barley Legal Home Brewers. You guys are awesome. And uh, if you do do a follow-up experiment <laughs> and want to talk about it, let me know. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Many thanks again to the members of the Barley Legal Club. What, what an awesome group of guys. Uh, I look forward to uh, a follow-up experiment if they want to do that, or, or if you want to do one, too. Uh, you know, every, as I say, every experiment needs to be validated, so I'd like to, to hear more about that. Uh, Barley Legal had an awesome booth at Club Night, and they, uh, they won the Golden Urinal Award for bringing the most kegs, the most beer to the event at Club Night. They brought 125 kegs of beer. <laughs> Club Night uh, was just mind-blowing this year. Huge. we got a lot more coming from Philadelphia. Looking forward to the coming weeks. In the meantime, if you have brewing questions, show suggestions, or just want to say howdy, write to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Our basic brewing growler bags are available in our shop. Protect your precious homebrew and craft beer as you take it from place to place as the weather continues to warm. Check out our new support link where you can throw a couple bucks into the tip jar by subscribing financially to our podcasts. I help us pay for this Philadelphia trip. <clears throat> Be sure to check out our DVDs, Extract Brewing and Partial Mashing, Stepping into All Grain, Low-Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and Introduction to Wine Kits. You can find them all on our site, along with combo deals to save you a few bucks, and shirts as well. Our logbooks are also in the store. Keep track of up to 50 batches of beer. You can see a listing of the fine folks across the country who sell our DVDs on basicbrewing.com, and if there isn't a vendor in your area, you can order them online in our online shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody who's continued to click on our Amazon.com link. Even though we weren't on in June, you guys still clicked, and we greatly appreciate it. Our featured products this week that were purchased through the link are Jingle Bells, 1-inch, 18-pack, sl uh, silver, not sliver, and what planning ahead for the Christmas, and Lifeline Organic Ocean Kelp Dog and Cat Supplement, 8-ounce. Thanks again, everybody. And remember, I can't tell who bought what, so no worries there. Just click on the Amazon.com logo on our site the next time you feel like Amazon shopping. And boy, do we appreciate your support. Don't forget, you can also join the American Homebrewers Association or subscribe to Brew Your Own Magazine through the associate links on basicbrewing.com. That's all until next time. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is provided by Kelly Dots. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long.